the one line I always liked was, uh, I'm gonna do today what other people aren't willing to, so I can do tomorrow what other people can't. I always loved that line of like, like whenever I'm training by myself, you know, kind of always like running, running lines like that through my head when I'm suffering. Like, like people aren't willing to do this right now. You're the only one in here. And then when I get to a competition and and I'm able to outperform someone on something, I'm like, okay, I did yesterday what, what you didn't, so that I can do today what you can't. Just knowing that, trusting that the hard work I'm putting in right now, it'll pay off. Maybe not today, you might feel like shit tomorrow, but it'll pay off in the end. What are you doing when no one's looking? Okay, I look at my medal from 2015 and I hate that fucking medal. It's cause, cause I didn't do it right, you know? It's like second place. I, I got second place in 2015. I should be proud of that result. I was the second fittest man in the world but I just look at that and I'm just like, you know, I fucking hate that year. Um, because I'm not proud of the effort I put in. I'm not proud of the corners I cut, you know? Um, I, I really, like, 2014, I had the same results. 2014, 2015, I had the exact same results. Completely different feeling about both seasons. 2014, I... I was so excited, I felt like I had won second place. 2015, exact same results, I felt like I had lost and gotten second place. Oh, it's just about the effort you put in, the expectations you set for yourself, and so 2016, you know, quit cutting corners, started doing it right, and the results showed for it. And so as long as I'm training, I'm gonna keep trying to do it that way, and. We'll see what the results reflect. Before the games, you know, it was still training because you know, that's where my friends were. That's what they were doing type thing. Um, never taking it seriously, not putting in any long hours, you know. But it was like hour or two in and out of the gym. Um, that summer of the 2014 games, I was working full time. Uh, I had an engineering internship at an aerospace company, so you know that consumed a ton of time. Uh, and I, I think before that, like I had never met any other games athletes in terms of like like actually been with them outside of competition. So like I always just assumed they were in another league, you know. Um, I didn't know what they were doing for training. I didn't know what they were, home lives were like. I didn't know anything about them. So I just assumed they were these untouchable athletes. Um, and then at the games, there's a couple different scenarios, you know, I kind of sit down, like athlete briefing. And I sat down next to one of, the, one of the really good guys and I remember kind of like, huh, you're my size. Like, and like we're in little chairs and you kind of look at, my quad next to theirs, and I'm like, oh, like, like, our legs are the same size. Like, you're not like this superhero everyone has on a pedestal. Hmm. Okay, like, maybe I can compare with you. Um, and I mean, rookie year of the games, I mean, you don't know what you're about to get hit with. Uh, but I mean, held up fairly well, made some really dumb mistakes, had some really good moments, and Came out in the wash in second place. I was like, okay, I think I can do this. 2015 was just like a being dumbass. Ended up getting second again. But then by, by the 2016 season, you know, I kind of figured my stuff out, kind of figured out what I needed to do, what I needed to change uh, for that upcoming season. You know, really dedicated myself. I wasn't in school anymore. So really dedicated 
everything. You know, day revolved around my training. Um, it wasn't just my time in the gym is when I put in the work. You know, I started putting in the work outside of the gym as well. And that, I think that was a big, big game changer. And that was when I realized, like, okay, I, I can, I can do this. They kind of corral everyone, you know, they call the heats, tell you what lane you're in, everyone gets in your, your little corral for 10 minutes. And uh, in that 10 minutes, I usually, usually dry heave, puke, uh, you know, just the nerves of that waiting, that anticipation of, I think it's half knowing like, this is about to really hurt. Um, like I'm gonna, I'm about to push myself to a level that's not enjoyable. Um, but then also like the fear. I'm, I'm always so scared going out of the competition floor, you know, uh, thinking all these guys are more capable than me. Like what if things don't go right? Uh, just being really scared, you know, all these guys have trained all year to win. No one's showing up trying to win second place. Everyone's there to try to get first place. So it's, that's pretty nerve wracking to me. I don't want that fear to go away. Um, I mean, like I hate it. It's a very unenjoyable feeling, but at the same time, it's like when I'm scared that I'm not capable in a workout, you know, I really focus, you know, I really, I know like, all right, there is no room for error. There is no room for slacking off anything. So anytime, anytime I have that fear, you know, I'm, I'm willing to go to a darker place to make up for that, for that being uncomfortable or not feeling confident in that movement. Um, perfect example, I mean, regionals Nate. Uh, was that, that was the 2016 season. You know, that workout, I was petrified of that workout. You know, when I did it in training, I, I got uh, eight, eight rounds plus something out of a 10 round workout. I wasn't even close to finishing it. And, um, you know, you see all the videos of guys online, you know, pumping out sets of 10 strict muscle ups with a weight vest. And it's like, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Like this workout could derail me. So I'm going into that workout just like absolutely petrified. And then, and then I ended up doing well. You know, I ended up, uh, I think I won the workout in my region. You know, it was like, I didn't let my mind wander for a second. I didn't care how much anything hurt during that workout. I was like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can't afford to slack off even for a second. So it's like, just keep pounding. And then there was other workouts where I was so comfortable, so lax going into it. As soon as something started to hurt a little bit, I was like, oh, I'll just back off a little bit, you know, let this pain go away. And then I pull a 10th place in the workout and it's like, what the hell, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, so it's, part of it is like, I don't want to get rid of that fear. You know, it really pushes me to strive for excellence. And then on the other end of things, like, when I am feeling comfortable, like not letting that affect my performance, not letting that that comfort creep in and you know make me slack off. Ooh, I'm getting all anxious right now. <laughs> <laughs> when you're coming out of your third day of training and nothing's going right and like everything's feeling bad and and then usually on top of it that's when it seems like everything is going perfectly for everyone else. So it's like, you just sit there, you're like, oh man, like what's happening right now? Like this is, this is my job. This is my full-time job and I'm not doing well at it. Like <laughs> this isn't good. Um, but you know, it's those moments that, you know, you have to, I don't want to say like trust the process, but you know, like stay on your grind. Uh, it's like, all right, well, things aren't going well make them go well you know like why are they not going well is it i'm not getting enough sleep is my diet a little bit off you know am i traveling too much like you're in control of those things make the changes um and i mean when, when i'm going on like week four of you know i'm just staying home 
the only person I'm seeing throughout the day is my girlfriend. Uh, it's not like I have friends dropping in from out of town to train. It's not like camera crews are around all the time. 99% of the time, I'm in this room alone. Uh, no one there to, you know, slap me on, on the ass and tell me good job, and, like nice PR. It's no, it's, it's me telling myself, get the fuck back on that treadmill, get back on that row or start squatting again. You know, anytime I'm sitting in between training sessions, like just messing around on my phone, it's me telling myself, like, put down your phone and get back to training. Like you could be doing something productive right now. Like, why are you just sitting here <laughs> looking at looking at Instagram? Like, put your phone down, go stretch, be productive, you know, better yourself instead of resting on your laurels. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's the stuff that, I mean, no one wants to see that. It's not exciting. Uh, it's not exciting to, like, walk into the gym and see me sitting on the platform stretching for the third hour straight. Like, who cares? But, I mean, that's what goes into it behind the scenes. You know, I, I think I think before it happened, I never really thought too much of what it would be like or what it should be like, anything like that. Um, and all, all the changes kind of happened in little progressions. You know, it wasn't just like an all of a sudden, like light switch type change of like, this is your life now. Um, and, you know, I kind of, I have to remind myself a lot of times, too, of, like, you know, people, people see the highlight reel. Um, it's very rare that someone, someone will post or, like, show the world the non-glamorous stuff, like, the stuff that isn't sexy. Um, the only posts that go up are the, the videos of PRs going up and the videos of, when things are going well and when things are looking good, it's no one posts up the video of like, oh man, you know, I have all these tears on my hands and I'm missing 245 snatches over here and like, <laughs> no one wants to see that shit. Uh, you know, I, I get a lot of messages, you know, like people see the footage of the games, you know, see the footage of the 2016 games and they're like, oh, that's so cool. I'm like, you're looking at a five day window of my entire year. Like that is just like a flash in the pan. This is good content. It's really good. Um, we're not doing we're not doing too much today um, just uh, one quick workout I don't know, no bar no barbells or anything like that just kind of put the pedal down high intensity low impact stuff um, and then I'll, I'll squat tonight but that's basically it you know, not not too much going on easy day Body feels good, you know. Um, kind of take these days of like, you know, total workout time is like I can be in and out of the gym in an hour. Uh, so you know, try to take a lot of that extra time that I don't usually have during the day. You know, just do body work. You know, stretch, roll out. Um, I don't know, kind of fix any of the aches and pains that I've kind of accumulated over the last couple of weeks. Make sure that next week going into training, you know, I'm feeling healthy, 100%, no, no aches and pains, just feeling good.
When I'm done with CrossFit, you know, I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to stretch out my career longer, longer than I should. You know, uh, I don't want to stay in the game longer than I, longer than I should, you know, um, I want to keep my health. I want to, I want to leave the sport still loving it, you know, uh, like I did Olympic weightlifting for 10 years and, and when I left the sport, I hated it. And, you know, it kind of sucks because, you know, I, I have a lot of, I had a lot of great friends um, that, that I met over the years, you know, like I grew up with them, you know, started competing when I was 12 years old and had the same guys at every competition and like we would train together, we'd get together in the off season. And uh, I remember for a long time after, after I finished weightlifting and it was, I mean, it was, it was really bad on my part that because of my resentment against weightlifting, I didn't want to hear from them. I didn't want to see them because it just brought up my bad blood. Um, whether that was jealousy, envy, um, and just kind of disappointed in the way things worked out for me. Um, so, you know, I've kind of reached back out and kind of rekindled a lot of those friendships, but, you know, at the time it just wasn't, wasn't happy for me. So, you know, the day that I decided to stop competing in CrossFit, you know, uh, I want to make sure that I'm still happy. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to leave any bad blood, you know. It's that constant reminder of whether I go all out and finish this in a minute 50 or slack off, get rid of this pain in my chest and go at 210. In 10 minutes, whichever route I take, I'm gonna feel fine. In 10 minutes, I will be up, walking, talking, I'll have a drink of water, and I'm gonna feel fine in 10 minutes. Regardless of which route I take, But which one is going to make me feel better about the effort that I put forth that day? You know, if if I slack off, add 20 seconds to my total time, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the gym that day thinking like, man, I didn't really give everything I had today. Like, eh, next time, next time, next time. Or I can push myself to the limit where, like, as soon as as soon as I see that that finish finish on, on the on the screen and just like collapse. Ten minutes later when I'm having my drink of water, I'm gonna think, man, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of that effort I put in today. I did everything I could today to to push myself to that final goal. If you just win, like who gives a shit? You know, like, it's it's not the win that feels good. It's all the work that you put in prior to, like, if, if you didn't do any work and just won some random competition by a fluke, are you going to be, like, marching down with a medal around your neck, like, so proud of that you won? Probably not. But, like, the fact that I, 51 weeks out of the year, like, I trained my ass off waking up to going to bed was all about that you know going into the gym like hands literally dripping blood and be like nope like i gotta gotta do some muscle ups today you know like like it was it was about halfway through the 2015 or 2016 season i had to go in and get mris down on my hips because i thought i had bone spurs in my hips because i was doing so much work and it's coming back from stuff like that. Like I had to go and get x-rays on both my hands. I thought I had boxer fractures on both my hands from flipping that pig so many times. That's why that medal felt, felt good. Like, like if I had won in, in 20, 2014, I probably wouldn't give a shit about this. Like, cause I wouldn't have had to work for it. I don't think it's the win that feels good. I think it's the hard work paying off that feels better. Do you think you're still working as hard now as you did last year? <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah.